This special broadcast of AEAC was made possible by Optison Sport Optics, RTI Arms, Diana, Daystate, FX Air Guns, Brocock, Air Arms, HN Sport, Myrow Sport, and JSB Match Diablo. And you guys know the best way to thank them. Folks, we're here with Claire West, the owner of Air Arms. And if you're looking for a video that's going to be all about product, this isn't going to be that. <laughs> <laughs> I want you guys, I want you guys to get to know Claire the way I've gotten to know her over the, the last couple of years, <clears throat> with with the um, with the preface that this is a partnership where. Um, in the United States, I was feeling a need to represent their brand, and I went after them quite aggressively to try to get product to review for you guys. And and if and if that's what you're looking for today, head on. Uh, make sure you go over to AEAC Home, and you can see a full review of the TX200. Just last week, we did a full review of their brand new S510 XS Ultimate Sporter regulated, and there's a Pro Sport at the house that also needs to be reviewed. And there's a new regulated TDR S510 that's uh, headed to the house. So that's all going to be out there for you. But the reason I chased this organization down and, and Claire down so heavily is because there, there's, there's kind of two perceptions in the industry. You know, there's our perception in the U.S. that, you know, we all know that your product is, is really second to none when it comes to quality and fit and finish. And you know you can talk more about that later. You know how you accomplish that, but but over but there's like a, there's like a whole nother aspect to Air Arms that that we're really not privy to in the states, and that's that you know when it comes to getting behind the air gun industry and supporting it, you know from grassroots, you know at the family level, at the sporting level, at the event level, it really trying to grow the sport from the ground up in a very fun and nurturing in thorough way. I can't think of any other organization uh, at all out there that does it like you guys do it. But, but before we get into that, you know, maybe, well, maybe just kind of take it from the top and, you know, we had a conversation once where you were just telling me your story. Okay. You yeah. know, and, and, and that's that, you know, Claire owns their arms, but, but she grew up as a young lady and a young woman in the, in the company. And maybe just kind of start there if you could yeah, let them know absolutely. and how it all, you know, how you kind of rolled into that as a kid and where you are today with it. Yeah, yeah so um, I actually was never meant to be part of the company. I was doing, um, back in the day, I was doing a, a business studies um, course. And part of that business studies course was we had to get uh, like a six weeks hands on experience. And so I'm looking for businesses that I can gain this experience from. Yeah. And my dad says to me, do you know what? We need, a, we need an extra pair of hands at, at the factory. Yeah. Come along, do your six weeks experience with us. Now, we call that an internship. Of course. Do they call that, and in Great Britain, uh, is it called the of, same? Yeah, it's, yes, yeah, sort of. Okay. But it wasn't a long-term long internship, it was just a six-week period. Mm -hmm. And so I got involved and never left. And that was 36 years ago. Now, who is your dad? <laughs> so my dad was Bob Nichols. Um, sadly, he passed away in 2011. And his parting gift was the company to myself and my three sisters. So there are four shareholders, um, all British. Um, and because I worked for the company for so long, I took on the MD role. Um, so my sisters are like silent partners, um, and they just leave it to me, and I do my thing, and well, that, we crack on. That role's been, you know, we, for those of us that have been around the air guns a long time, I feel like, in the States I'm talking about, I know oh, in Great Britain, you can see Claire, I mean, it's like you're everywhere at the same time all the time on these events. I mean, I don't know how you do it. I mean, this is a woman that puts a lot of heart and soul into air gunning, into you know being hands-on with the community, but and that's that's really the direction that I feel like you've taken to the company to the next level. But but your dad, he he had a philosophy um, when it comes to constructing air guns, and you know in the air gun industry, 
you know, I don't know if you guys know it, but we have we have assemblers and we have manufacturers. You know, there's two different companies, and Air Arms is one of those organizations that's a true manufacturer and that they make everything and have control over everything that goes into the gun, and they're such perfectionists. You know, you, you hear Matt Dubber over at Air Arms Hunting South Africa, you know, he'll freely tell you uh, that, you know, that there's just not a better made air gun anywhere. And I think that started with with, with, with that. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. So, I mean, just to give you a quick uh, overview of how we got into the air gun market, I mean, it's very common knowledge in the UK, but maybe not so stateside. So, first and foremost, we are engineers. We are precision engineers. The engineering company, we've been around for 55 years, and that was the company that my father founded. Um, as part of that role, we used to produce component parts for a company called Sussex Armoury. Sussex Armoury. Sussex Armoury, yeah. And they made rifles such as, I don't know if you guys might know the Jackal, uh, the Firepower, the High Power. Um, so we made the parts for those rifles. To cut a very long story short, that company went into liquidation. This was back when? Back in the 70s. Okay, when um, I was born. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we as an engineering company, whose main customer was Sussex Armoury, were left with a huge quantity of rifle parts, and we're like, what are we going to do with this? Mm -hmm. So, my father being the very clever businessman that he was, he struck a deal with the receivers, we call them the receivers, I don't know sure what you call them, and we bought the rights to the rifle, and in the very early days we uh, assembled the rifles and sold them under the engineering name of NSP. So NSP. NSP Engineering. NSP. Yeah. What does that? Do you know what does that stand for? You don't want to know what that stands okay. for. <laughs> <laughs> Next, okay. All right. So, so you started we to assemble our, this we, under we NSP we Engineering. We have our own versions. Okay. <laughs> Work it out. <laughs> um, so yeah, and we didn't gain much traction because it wasn't sort of very air gun orientated. Yeah. So, and this was one of the very first jobs that I got involved in, which was super exciting. So as I sort of turned up, they were toying with names to a branding name for the, the guns that we were making. And we actually uh, came up with the name Air Arms. In fact, our general manager at the time, Colin King, came up with the name Air Arms. And we actually put out a competition through the magazines to come up with a logo. Way back then, way back in the uh, late se late seventies uh, or early eighties. I love your neon AA in the front of the booth, oh, that's by the way. Cool. That's me. Gorgeous, <laughs> love it. We've got to have a bit of glam, and um, so yeah, we. And one of the first jobs I that was left to me was to sort through all the um, designs that came to uh -huh. me, and, mm -hmm. and so that was that was quite that was good. So we came up with the name Air Arms, and we registered Air Arms in nineteen eighty three. So we've been around a lot longer than 1983, but that's when we sort of registered the branding name Air Arms. Now you've been in the game for so long, and it's like we talked about over over in Great Britain, you know, the sun kind of rises and sets with Air Arms. I mean, it just really does. They're that involved, and and you know, there's just it, the air gun culture over there. It's like. When you talk to anyone in Great Britain, it's pretty much air arms, air arms, air arms, air arms. And you know, you know, so you, it's, it just comes across to us as you own, you yeah. own that. But there's a there's a way you got there, and I and yeah. and I I want to drill down like on the because you and I have had a lot of talks, and uh, on your manufacturing, you have like a different approach when it comes to manufacturing. Do you know, I think, um, and I don't want to blow our own trumpet here because that's not the type of company. We oh, are. blow it, blow it. <laughs> but I think <laughs> they want to see you blow it. <laughs> Um, the, the air gun industry has a lot to thank Air Arms and my father for because way back then there were a few people, PCPs have been around for a long, long time, there's no escaping that. We didn't invent the wheel. Right. But what we did do, uh, and what my father did, was, was take a huge gamble. He invested at a vulnerable time very heavily into. Uh, technology and CNC equipment uh, to take on PCPs and produce them for the masses. Because back in those days, yeah, they were being produced, but they were hugely expensive, hugely agricultural, um, and they were very few and far between. So with the 
the help of a guy called Bill Sanders, many of you may know Bill Sanders from years gone by. Bill Sanders was our sales and marketing manager. And he had a huge passion. And I think that's the difference with Air Arms. We are so passionate about our sport. And not just the sport, the people in it. And I think we, we, we've built some amazing relationships over the years. And we've maintained those relationships. So yeah, I think that's important. You're definitely a relationship company. And we see that you know, in the social media and the way you participate. But where I was trying to lead Claire, and I think she's just being humble, is, you know, they're, they're absolute perfectionists. Like, I'll, I'll push, like, I'll take your feedback and I'll try to push her, maybe change this, maybe change that. And, and she'll come up with a lot of good reasons on, you know, we could do that, we could do that very easily, but we really feel like in our heart of hearts that this is the best way, this is the safest way to make an air gun, and at the end of the day, Steve, it works, and it works very well. And, you know, kind of the proof, you know, the proof is in the pudding. Yeah, you know, you we guys... Do we do listen. Constantly listen. And we, and we do evolve our products as a result. Not necessarily, you can't see it. You don't know what's going, under the, going on under the bonnet. But we, one, we are our biggest critics. Two, we are never satisfied with... Um, uh, we, do, we don't compromise. Compromise doesn't even come into our vocabulary. Yeah. We use the very finest materials. That we work with material suppliers. We don't just accept what they have to offer. Yeah. We stipulate what we want. And I think I once said to you, you know, both of all the barrels, best barrels in the world, but they are not all made equal. Right. And um, we are very specific about our wants and our needs. And that applies to our stocks as well. Minelli, by far, are the best stock manufacturers in the world. Mm -hmm. But we give them a design. We don't just say, go make us a stock. You know, we talk to shooters, we talk to um, knowledgeable people, we think about the ergonomics. Everything is carefully thought. Mm -hmm. We come up with a prototype, and then we say to Minelli, refine that for us. Yeah. So, um, it's not just a case of buying in. Yeah, it's, a, it's interesting when, you, when you're on this end of it, when you're on the receiving end and, and just, you know, the getting to know you end. It's, it's a philosophy where it's, it comes across as we believe, we believe so strongly in our approach to making air guns that we would rather, we would, we would rather always do, how, how do I want to word it? We, 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 we over-engineer everything. Well, you over-engineer, but, but you almost have this philosophy where you're like, we're going to build it this way. It's the right way to do it, and if it costs us some sales, that's okay, because we're going to sleep really good tonight. That's, I think, what I'm what I'm trying Absolutely. to say. And yeah. and and I think they know that. You know, you re, you've read about. You know, they all know your S410, your 510, your TX200, your Pro Sport. That's how we've known you in the states. You know, o over the last decade, and and whenever the name comes up, it's always synonymous with with deep quality. But that's just that's just part of yeah. Air Arms, right? So then there's this whole other piece. That I wanted to bring you guys in on, and and that's your approach to the sport and growing the sport yeah. at the ground level, and and I'm very blessed in that I I have my hands in a, you know into a lot of different approaches and organizations, and you guys just take it to a whole new level, and it doesn't always reach us here in the states. So if you could maybe just talk a little bit about your philosophy yeah, in yeah. growing the sport, what of you course. do differently. Yeah. Yeah. So our, our philosophy is, you know, um, make no mistake, first of all, that the sporting market is by far our biggest market. But the sporting market doesn't win gold medals, it doesn't win trophies, it's not something that um, it, well, everybody participates in it, but particularly in the UK, it's not something that we're vocal about because it's very much frowned upon. Um, to be humble. To, to be hunting. To be hunting. Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought so, you meant being vocal about the trophies. No, and... so, the, uh, so the point being is how do we promote our sport mm -hmm. if not through our target sports? Sure. Because we can't do it through our sporting market. Okay, I got you. I mean so, it's not fashionable to be hunting. Absolutely. I got you. Yeah. So, we, um, we get that too. I think, uh, again, Air Arms approach, as it was way back in the early 80s, was to bring PCP air rifles to the masses at affordable price. So we take that philosophy and we think, well, 
we need to encourage all aspects of shooting, be it sporting, be it target. So therefore, how are we going to do that? We can only do that if we get behind the sports. And as a result of that, those target shooting disciplines are the ones that are winning the trophies, are getting in the newspaper, the, the articles, and yeah. are getting written about. And I think it's almost sort of a double-edged sword. You have to, if you know, if you want to promote that side of the sport, you have to support it. You do, and now I don't know if I'm going to get this out of Claire because she's very humble, and the, the culture of their company is very humble and not flashy, but. If you just look at the last, say, three years, oh my God. you know, a lot of us don't know this in the States, but, but, but Air Arms in Great Britain and on the world, on the global platform, you know, there's the U.S. and then there's the global air gunning platform. You know, it's been a successful three years on the podium for you guys. Can you just kind of recap yeah. like what you've done? Oh gosh, so now I know I'm going to make you blush, but <laughs> I, they, they need to know. Spot. Okay, so let's take um, let's take Phil Target. You guys know about Phil Target. Um, we have some of the best shooters in the world, and I, I, I'm, I can say that because I know most of them quite personally, and I'm friends with many of them. And um, we we've, we've had in recent years two gold positions in field target we've had a gold position in the recoil class um, we've on the world platform on the world platform um, target sprint just last year we swept up 54 medals um, ranging from gold silver bronze personal best 54 it's just it was mind-blowing mind-blowing and um, that's because we have such a great team and we support that. We have 50. I was just working it out the other day actually because I had to get new team kit. 50 uh, Air Arms team members in the UK. That's huge. You know, you, you look at the, the US and our teams are three to seven people. And we oh, get wow. excited about that, but the reality is I'm trying to expose you guys at home to the bigger picture of air gunning on the global platform. And I knew this about Air Arms, and I and, and it's the reason I chased them down to, you know, get them involved in AEAC so that, you know, we can we can be sharing that message. But so you know, there's there's the winning, and it's funny these guys at home they go Air Arms knows how to make a regulator, you know, but the re you know because you know to us it's new, you know, it's new in the 510, and and but the reality at the end of the day is you've been making regulators that are performing at a high level in championship guns for decades. Yeah, and mean, she's mentioned three yeah, years, she's yeah. being humble, guys, but this has been going on... 30? Decades. 30 years. Yeah, yeah. And, and we just, we're just not privy to it in the States, and my job is to carry the mail. And what's interesting... So that we can learn and yeah. know. And what's interesting is, actually, field target shooting started 40 years ago, and it just so happens that we're hosting the World Field Target Championships in August in the UK. It's going to be mega. 450 competitors. 39 countries. Which is amazing. Wow. You know, we get excited and rightfully so about our extreme bench rest and our RMAC, you know, we'll, we'll get 150, but you have to realize that the air gunning thing is really relatively new in the States. Yeah, that's right. You know, we haven't been at it for 30 years like they have over in, in Great Britain. So we're off to a great start, but it's really just so much bigger than we realize. Yeah. And that was my goal in, in asking you to sit down and you know, just share a little bit about your company, your direction, your approach. And, and as such, you know, we don't just develop sporting rifles. We, we develop target rifles from 10 meter pistols, 10 meter precision rifles, to field target, hunter field target. And we support all those disciplines that we make products for because it's important to us. Your Air Arms is not about the hard sell, it's about supporting the industry and supporting the sport to ensure that it continues long after, you know, long after we've gone. Yeah. Um, because it's important. And we feel it. It's almost like the, the, the energy I get is you guys are so humble with it and so, like, proud but not wanting to toot your own horn. It almost is like it's easy to get missed. Because yeah. over in the States, we're like, we move so fast with everything in our world that it's like we're drinking from a fire hose and unless we slow down to talk about it and recognize it you know they just they just have no idea but this, this has been a long video but uh, there's one more thing I want to talk about that I noticed that you guys do different and do especially well is 
you know, it's like weekly you're involved on the ground levels, you know, from, from the community shoots to the, you know, the world stage, but you've kind of developed this cool segue yes. in which, because, you know, you know, you take a brand new shooter who's never owned an air gun, the last thing we want to do is go down to the range and start asking questions or bring our gun down there or bring our gun to a shoot in front of a whole bunch of pros, you know, at the first time. It's, you know, it's embarrassing. That's right. You yeah, know, because we, right. after all, we're human because we don't know what to do. We don't want to make mistakes. We don't make a fool out of ourselves. That's right. You guys have a solution to that. Yeah, what have absolutely. you been up to with that? So we have what's called the Air Arms Experience. Super cool. So the Air Arms Experience is a platform that we take to all the exhibitions that we attend. Which is what on a yearly basis? Oh, too many. Too many. Um, uh, six, six or seven, which doesn't sound a great deal. But with your schedule, uh, that's yeah, a lot. Absolutely. And, it, and that's just exhibitions. It's not. We also take time to visit the events and support the events. So uh, that's on top of the exhibition work that we do. But the Air Arms experience, we take to a number of different um, exhibitions throughout the year in the UK. And it's exactly that, Steve. You put yourself in the shoes of a non-shooter. And how do you encourage them into our sport? And what you said, putting yourself in a vulnerable position, why would you take yourself off to a shooting club? That ha how do I point a gun? You're not going to do it. So we have this philosophy of always thinking in the, in the shoes of the shooter. And so we came up with this plan, uh, the Air Arms Experience, where we would provide the platform for all our target shooting disciplines to come along and demonstrate their sports. And so that people could come and have a go at an informal in a, uh, environment and just see what they like because there are so many different target shooting disciplines available to us. Which one do we know we want to do? And the great thing is the British target shooting organisations support the experience wholeheartedly because they see the benefits. And what's really exciting, I had the guy um, British shooting show just recently, I had the head guy of uh, British Bench Rest come up to me and he said, I just want to uh, say thank you. Thank you for providing us with this platform. Yeah. We are getting new people signing up for Bench Rest um, continually. And you're like, well, let me just say it, you know, and, and yeah, I don't want to create, you know, too many waves out there, but you know, imagine guys and gals, if you could go to, you know, an extreme bench rest in Arizona, or you could go to a Rocky Mountain Air Gun Challenge in Utah, or you could go to the Pyramid Air Cup in Ohio and be involved with all the professional shooters and watch all that go down. But at the same time, over here on the sideline, have Air Arms come, winky winky, naughty naughty, <laughs> with their Air Arms experience and be a part of that at those events to where you could try all the different you know, guns and all the different ways that they shoot them and all at the same time be able to talk to the pros and go watch them too. I mean, that would be so next level. So I would like to officially plant the seed that maybe that's something down the road that could be looked at to grow our great sport you know, in the US. And what's, what's interesting, and I'll just throw this, this in as the last yeah. slide, Let's talk about target sprint for a quick second. So target sprint is a discipline that um, we partnered with British Shooting a couple of years ago. The growth of target sprint has been phenomenal in the UK. We have a target sprint level within the Air Arms experience. We took a, a young lad, came in in 2016, September 2016, had to go on the experience, tried everything, really enjoyed the target sprint element of it. From that, we found out where his local club was, got involved, and by July 2017, he was the British national champion. And that's just, and that's such a great story. And let's just end this, because I know she's not going to say it unless I drag it out of her. But in target sprint, in the last year, what is your, what is the Air Arms medal portfolio look like? Well, in time, as I say, um, how many? How many? Just internationally. Just yeah. Fifty-four. <laughs> Fifty-four. Fifty-four from medals. Last year, 2018. It's just, it's just, it's just amazing, and I'd love to see that somehow brought to the states. And I hope that the industry somehow sees this video and looks at this chat as the tip of the spear. You know, maybe they can bring this about. And 
And um, I know I'm behind you guys 100% in everything you do, and I'm so grateful for the partnership and how you're feeding product through AEAC and Air Gun Nation now. And on behalf of them, I just wanted to say thank you. And thanks for opening up and sharing with them back home. You're welcome. Okay? Appreciate you. Thank you.